everyone. Um, really, uh, really glad to see you there today. Um, I'm Mathieu Quiré, the lead candidate uh, in the list En Marche Modem of the French election to represent French living in Norway and Iceland. So the vote starts in less than two weeks. So if you are using French living in Norway and Iceland, or if you know any French living in those two countries, don't hesitate to remind them about this election. So today we are the 9th of May. 9th of May, it is Europe Day. And I'm really, really happy to celebrate this day with you. So this conference has been registered as part of the conference on the future of Europe. So what is the, the conference on the future of Europe? It is a citizen-led debate series, giving people across Europe a chance to share their ideas for the future. So all your ideas and contributions will be added to the platform. Um, so you are all welcome to ask any questions at any time um, to our special guests. So you just need to raise your hands on Zoom or you can add your questions uh, on the chat. So today we've chosen uh, to gather uh, around a really important topic that we are all facing, climate change. Uh, how can we fight uh, climate change while creating jobs? So that's a question that our two special guests uh, will uh, try to answer. Um, so this is really two special guests, why? Because they are two leaders of the world in terms of ecology and environment. So we have Sveinung Otevaden. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, he's the Norwegian Minister of Climate and Environment. And on the other part, we have Jan Berling, uh, who is the French ambassador in charge of the environment. So Sveinung Otevaden is the deputy leader of the Liberal Party, Venstre, here in Norway. And Jan Verling has been the national secretary of the Greens from 2005 to 2007 in France, vice president of the Mouvement Démocrate, and has now created his own party called Le Parti de la Nature. So Jan told me the two of you have met at the United Nations Environment Program. Is it true? I, I remember a, a little bit of this meeting, but I'm not sure that. Uh... Uh, the minister me remembers this, this meeting. It, 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 there were a, a lot of people, so perhaps he is not very in, in, in his mind, but it was in, in Nairobi, I think. Okay, um, great, thanks. So I, my first question that I have to you is regarding the Paris Agreement. So just to explain to everyone, the Paris agree Agreement aims to limit global warming to below two and preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. So are we, uh, first of all, maybe to Svainu, uh, Norway is not part of EU. So how do you manage to participate at the negotiating table of you know, all those agreements. And then my second question around that is, are we on the right track to achieve the Paris Climate uh, Accord or how will we reach it as well? Sure. Uh, well, uh, let me start by wishing everyone happy Europe Day, uh, even though uh, as you uh, painfully correctly point out, Norway is not a member of the EU. Uh, we still uh, celebrate Europe Day, at least some of us do. Uh, and I should also underline that um, we are indeed members of um, most important EU programs, including almost all programs regarding the environment and climate. So uh, we participate in uh, the European climate policies quite deeply, uh, in fact, but of course, uh, unfortunately not as a voting member, uh, but we'll see, maybe someday, someday in the future. Um, so uh, your question uh, first uh, is um, how, how does Norway participate in these uh, arenas, uh, these treaty negotiations? How do we get a seat around the table even um, as a non-EU member? Well, uh, obviously there are some big players globally when it comes to climate negotiations. Uh, and of course, when it comes to actually doing the work uh, and you have the European Union, obviously, as a huge player, um, uh, you have the United States that has been vacant for quite a few years, but now they're certainly uh, back on track uh, with force. We could perhaps uh, elaborate a little bit on that later. 
China, of course, is, is very important. So, you know, uh, compared to all these major economies, Norway is a small player. That being said, uh, Norway has a long-standing tradition of uh, spearheading uh, international initiatives on the environment. Uh, we are a major contributor uh, to climate finance in general and to preservation of tropical rainforests in particular. Uh, and we usually step up when asked and take on uh, important um, jobs and positions. Uh, for example, at the um, at the last COP, my, my predecessor uh, as a climate minister uh, was put in charge uh, of getting some of the most difficult negotiations uh, finished at the end. Uh, myself, I'm currently serving as the president of the United Nations Environment Assembly. So um, environmental issues, climate issues are certainly on top of our international agenda. Uh, and when Norway uh, and when Norway took place in the UN Security Council uh, this year, uh, we also said that climate uh, would be one of our priorities. Uh, so sure, Norway isn't the biggest player around, but I think we certainly punch above our weight uh, and we try to make a difference. Now to your second question, uh, Mathilde, which is on, uh, are we on the right track? Well, the answer is no, uh, not yet. Um, this year is an incredibly important year to get on the right track because where we currently stand, where all countries have made their, um, submitted their NDCs as they're called, their national determined contributions to the Paris Agreement, which is to state how much will your country do to protect the environment? How much will you reduce your climate emissions over the next decade? Uh, where we stand now, we're not on track to reach the uh, two degree target, uh, much less the 1.5 degree target. However, uh, this is a very important year for countries to raise their ambitions because every five years, uh, you're supposed to uh, submit new ambitions uh, and more ambitious NDCs. And uh, just over the last few weeks, there has been a lot of movement. So the United States finally, uh, um, submitted their uh, enhanced NDC, uh, they're gonna uh, reduce their emissions by um, um, by um, um, 50 to 55 percent by 2030. Uh, the EU uh, finally got all its legislation in place for its enhanced target. Uh, there have been positive news out of Japan, out of Canada. Uh, we're still waiting for China to step up, though there have been positive signals. For example, when it comes to uh, switching from coal-fired power plants to renewables. So uh, I think when we get into Glasgow uh, in late fall, which is the uh, climate summit this year, uh, we're hopefully going to be, if not on the right track, at least much closer to being on the right track than we were heading into this year. So I think there's a lot of positive things happening now, a lot of good news, but uh, there's still a lot of work to be done, for sure. Yeah, and do you have something to say around uh, that as well. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you, Mathilde, for inviting me to this meeting. And um, I, I don't have a lot of things to add to what uh, the minister say, said just at the moment. Um, perhaps a few, a few uh, remarks. Um, the first one is that uh, uh, European Union is, is uh, has done a lot of efforts, and I think it's uh, the, the 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 player, as the minister said, who has done the the, the more is more important uh, efforts from for, during the, the last uh, decades and the last years, and uh, it's so so important that uh, uh, no, we are not uh, the 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 bigger contributor to the, the gas emission in the world. The, the 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 biggest one is China, uh, really, and uh, um, everybody is looking at China now because uh, uh, they had, during the, the Paris Agreement, uh, everybody was a little bit pessimistic about China because they didn't make make a, 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 a put on the table an an, an engagement was. Uh, uh, who could 
say to everybody is that we will reach the, the goal of, of uh, two degrees or, or 1.5 1, 1 degrees. But the last uh, month, uh, the Xi Jinping uh, announced new uh, engagements and uh, everybody is now a little bit more optimistic. I think, and in Glasgow, we hope uh, everybody everybody will, will confirm that, and especially China. And the good news, the good news, uh, of course, and the minister just said it, it's a change in, in United States. We, we don't have any more uh, a president who, who was just uh, septic on climate change, and now we have Joe Biden, and it's completely different. And they, come, they came back uh, in the Paris Agreement, and they want to, 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 to be uh, leaders on, 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 on uh, the fight against climate change. That's really uh, the two main reasons we, we can be optimistic, uh, I think, for the next, uh, for, for Glasgow and, and, and the next uh, 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 years. And um, the other thing I wanted to add is that um, uh, uh, we, we can see in, in all countries uh, a new generation of, of leaders who are coming on, on responsibilities. And, and, and this new generation, young leaders are more uh, convinced on, on, on the need of action. And, and, uh, and uh, that's the third reason, reason I, I can say we, we, are, we can be optimistic. Yes, and what you explained really well as well, Jan, uh, is regarding the how France, of course, is, is a big player, Norway is a big player and, and leading in, uh, in all these environmental issues, but just those two countries alone would not make a difference. We need as European Union and, and obviously the economical uh, European uh, part needs to all together have this strong voice uh, in, the, in the world, right? That's what you, you, you explained, uh, Jan, um, when you, you were mentioning about uh, this China and, and the US, and we need to be unified as a big bloc uh, and not to be divided inside the uh, European Union. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so what I want to also speak about is that real change starts in the human mind. Uh, so the first step as well is to help raise awareness. So theory and practice on climate change needs to be taught at schools. And I think you're all doing a fantastic job uh, both in Norway and in France uh, to, to increase all that and, and to, to have now uh, environmental subject uh, at school. Uh, which is which is really great, um, but there are also associations. So I would take, for example, uh, um, one example that is called the climate uh, collage. Uh, so which is a collaborative game, which has a mission to raise awareness of the causes and consequences of climate change among as many people as possible around the world. So the founder is is a French engineer. And this game has been played by over 1,000, uh, 150,000 people over the world so far since 2018. Um, there is now an antenna here in Norway, and I encourage uh, you to register to all their events. So it's called the, the Climate College Norway. It takes only three hours of your time, it's free. And they organize a session in English. Uh, you can ask for sessions in French and they will soon do uh, in Norwegian as well. Um, and that starts with, you know, raising awareness. And we know that Norway has like this unique, amazing nature. France has a diverse countryside that contributes to its gastronomy in terror. So how do we pass them on responsibility to our grandchildren? It's a question to, to both of you. Well, maybe I can start then. Uh, well, um, I, I think what you're pointing to, which is the generational issue here, is, is just key when you're discussing environmental policies. Uh, and uh, there, there is no doubt uh, that, um, that um, climate change and environmental issues are just on the top of the agenda for most young people. Uh, we can see that both from polling, uh, 
but also from actions in the streets. Um, just a few years ago, you had all these massive school strikes uh, who were, of course, initiated by Greta Thunberg in Sweden. Uh, but then they happened all around Europe and all around the world, in fact. And I think they made a real difference, uh, not in the sense that you get immediate climate action in every country because of it, but because it has really raised this as a generational issue and it has helped keeping environmental issues on top of the agenda, even in a situation of a global pandemic. Because uh, over the last year, uh, when the global pandemic has certainly been the most important issue in every country and how to deal with it, uh, a lot of us were really worried that this would dramatically slow down uh, our uh, work for climate action and that it would just disappear uh, and would just fall out of the agenda in every country. And everything everyone would be concerned with would be COVID relief. But that hasn't happened. Uh, what has in fact happened is, uh, is the opposite because while handling the pandemic, you've also seen at the same time um, the United States re-entering the Paris Accord. You've seen the European Union push through the European Green Deal, uh, which is a landmark achievement. Um, and in country after country, uh, you've seen uh, that climate change hasn't disappeared. Uh, and there are still initiatives being launched while in lockdown, while in uh, a critical pandemic situation. So, and, and my point is, I think those school strikes and the generational thing is, has been really important in making that happen uh, because it's still seen as a really important issue. Now, uh, how do we pass on, you know, uh, all of our, you know, as you say, the, the fantastic, uh, uh, sceneries and nature uh, in Norway and the, the beautiful and diverse countryside in France uh, in a good state to uh, to our uh, successors. Well, this is just uh, key at, at the center of the issue uh, because uh, uh, I, I think uh, getting people involved with seeing that environmental issues and climate change are not abstract. They're not far in the future. They're concrete. They're here and now. And they're about the things that we most truly love. They're about the things close to us. They're about um, pr pr protecting uh, fantastic natural phenomena. They're about uh, ensuring that we can still have a, a good way of life on the countryside. They're about stopping extreme weather conditions, uh, stopping uh, extreme droughts, which would have dramatic effects for agriculture in many parts of Europe, etc. cetera. So um, um, I, I find that making climate change concrete about close things, uh, the things you hold dear, uh, is the way to raise awareness uh, and not just be talking about all the abstracts and what would happen in a distant future and international relations and so forth. So so I think what you're pointing to here, Mathilde, is, uh, is uh, quite central uh, and the one way of uh, moving forward also and getting on the right track in, uh, in, uh, in protecting nature. Yeah, and I think you're the expert in uh, biodiversity as well. So it's a link uh, that you can make uh, there. Um, yes, but, but, but your, your question was, um, I think, um, um, about, about uh, the, the young generation and um, what is the impact of this young generation today on the decision of, of make made by, by, by the leaders. Um, uh, what I, I'm, I can see in France, I, I, I'm not sure it's different in, in, in uh, I'm sure it's in not, it, it's not different in, in, so, in uh, all European uh, uh, countries uh, from in, in European Union and in, in, in not European Union, but in rich countries, I think it's the same in a lot of uh, countries, uh, rich countries, except the, the young generation is um, is now a um, situation to to not only to ask uh, uh, adults to make decisions, but they they um, are a little bit um, uh, rude with with with, uh, with the with the leaders, and I think that it, we have to to listen to the message they they. They are giving to us. 
what I think it's it's a consequence of, of what we did for the 20 last years, I think 30 last years, because during this all, all these this years we, we, we made in the, the schools uh, programs about uh, environment. And uh, I can remember uh, little kids were um, uh, um, uh, going in the countryside and, and, and looking at the rubbish and, and, and took it away from the nature. And, and that, that made them really uh, um, uh, involved in, in, in uh, in the preservation of nature, and, and I have a, 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 I can remember a, a, some colleagues of, of, of uh, I have in the French Parliament or, or uh, leaders, political leaders in France. Now they have uh, child who are young adults who are asking them to make action, and and these leaders are changing, and they uh, know, for example, a colleague who just stopped for a few months now to eat uh, meat because uh, <laughs> the, the, is, is, the, the child she, she has. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. yeah I, ca I cannot uh, hear you well, uh, Jan. I think you're a bit oh. uh, disconnected. You can hear me? Yes, now it's good. Yes, uh, sorry, I don't have good connection. To her. Okay, but maybe we, we can yeah. we can move on on this uh, concrete uh, thing that you were just mentioning and and also use finding about you know not being too abstract and being a bit concrete because that's what people want to know that that's for sure. So if I can ask you, what are the three main actions citizens can take at their level right now that can really make a change? Could, could you answer me that question? Well, that's a central question indeed. Uh, well, uh, by far the most important thing you can do uh, is to vote <laughs> and vote, vote for parties who have a green agenda. Uh, that's. That's true in every country, at least in every democracy, and that is by far the most important thing. But uh, if we look past that for a minute into what you can do in your own life, for example, uh, there are certainly uh, things you can do. Um, if, uh, for example, um, uh, you're thinking of buying a new car, uh, if you choose to buy a zero emission car instead of a fossil fuel car, uh, that is perhaps the most important single action you can take, uh, at least in Norway, uh, to reduce your carbon footprint and to reduce the carbon footprint of the future owners of that car once they go into the secondhand market. So that's one uh, concrete uh, issue. Uh, you can also eat more climate friendly. Uh, we talk a lot about food and food systems when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to environmental issues, uh, and for good reason, because the uh, carbon footprint uh, from food production uh, is, is massive. And also the uh, toll on nature uh, is quite dramatic. Uh, so to choose products from sustainable value chains is important and to try to eat both more healthy and more climate friendly, which means eating more greens, more fish, uh, some to cut, to cut down on red meat uh, is important. And of course, to try to uh, limit your carbon footprint when it comes to travel, not when it comes to just your which car you buy, but also to choose public transportation when you can, to choose to go on train rather than to fly when it's possible for you to do that, things like that. All those things matter. And um, we're not going to be able to stop climate change on individual actions alone, but they are important, both when it comes to actually reducing emissions, but also to raise awareness uh, and to help uh, companies and, and value chains that are greener to to uh, to get ahead in the market. So uh, I'm certainly in favor of citizen actions, uh, both in the ballot box, uh, but also in the choices you make in your own life. Jan, what are the three main actions you would suggest uh, people would, start, would need to start doing? I should have been, I, should, I must have been a, a Norwegian because because uh, I don't have a, a, another another uh, short choice, and uh, what what the minister just said, uh, perhaps 
perhaps it's a little bit different about the vote because in France, if you want to vote green, it's not sure it's a better vote you can do, but we will speak about it a little bit later, I think in this conversation. Uh, but um, uh, yes, it's really important to, to, to say that uh, what we do all every day on, on our consumption is really in, an impact on, 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 on the planet. And for example, I, I had read uh, that uh, it's a, it was a WWF report who said that if everybody, especially in rich countries and especially in the United States, who say it's too much meat, but they said that if uh, everybody uh, will just uh, reduce uh, half his consumption of, of meat, we, we would resolve 25% uh, 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 of the problem of the planet. Uh, on the impact of on the planet, so it's really uh, you can see that it's really uh, important the question of of what you what we eat, what we are we what we are in our plate. It's why it's why the European Union uh, decided to make a, a, a big um, uh, program. Uh, uh, was called uh, uh, Farm to Fork, um, uh, especially to to change our. Uh, uh, model of, of, of agriculture and, 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 uh, and uh, consumption. Um, I think that, that's a, a, an important thing. The second thing I want to say about that, about the consumption, it's uh, that uh, we don't, can't only uh, hope that uh, people do that alone. We have to help them to, to, to make this choice uh, every, every day. And uh, it's why we, we need uh, labels and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, rules to 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 push some uh, products who are more uh, um, good for the planet um, and to help con con uh, consumers to 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 make a good choice and uh, and finally the third thing is of course to to change our our um, uh, use of energy to 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 use less energy and uh, if I can say I just uh, it's not only a joke, it's really a, a thing we have to have in, in our mind. Uh, today, everybody's speaking about um, uh, um, mobility, uh, so using the cars or uh, the uh, heating of the houses. But the third thing we, we don't see, and we are this evening a little bit on, on the wrong way, it's to use less uh, internet and, 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 and social networks while consuming a lot of energy. But it's a new thing we have to say, but especially to the young people who are always saying to adults, you, you make, don't make an, enough action, but by making less Instagram and, and Twitter, it's good for the planet too. <laughs> Good. Um, thanks for, for both of your answer. Before we move on to how we can actually create jobs uh, with fighting climate change, I have still a question related to that. Uh, and it's regarding, you know, we saw in France with the crisis of Gilets jaunes, the yellow vest that you might have, have heard of, uh, that citizens at the grassroots level, right? They're not always ready or equipped to change their habits um, because that's started with the fact of this tax on, you know, the gas, uh, the oil part, right? So what can be done to support the transition effectively? Well, uh, when it comes to uh, the, the where and why's of the Gilets jaunes, uh, I think perhaps uh, you, yourself and, and Jan are better placed to, to, to analyze why, why that happened and what were the motivations behind it. But it seems to me as an outsider that, that the gas prices were at least part of it uh, and that uh, there is a, re a real potential for, uh, for public outrage and protests when it comes to climate policies. Uh, we had a mini version of that uh, in the local elections in Norway in 2019. Uh, people didn't really take to the streets, but what happened was that we got protest parties in all our big cities that were against uh, high, um, well, tall roads, basically, uh, but which is a sort of car tax, I suppose. Uh, and they got 10, 15, 20% of the vote in some of our major cities. Uh, so uh, there is certainly a potential to mobilize 
citizens and voters against climate friendly policies. There is no doubt about that. So what do we do about it? Well, um, I think it's important that we don't use that as an excuse not to act. Uh, there are a lot of forces, both in Norwegian politics and in, in other countries that uh, keep saying that um, that because there are protests, because there are people who are against climate policies, we should be very careful to implement new climate policies. That is not the solution. But I think it's possible to explain to people that uh, we uh, will make life better for you with these policies. We will help you. We will support you in the transition. Um, to take one example, uh, when we launched uh, our government's climate action plan this January, um, which is our 10 year plan to reduce our emissions, a, a key part of that was a quite high increase in carbon taxes. We're gonna more than triple our national carbon tax. Um, and that is obviously uh, something that has a potential to create conflict. Uh, it will make uh, gas more expensive uh, and a lot of services could perhaps be more expensive. So what uh, our message was uh, and remains is that yes, we are gonna increase carbon taxes in the next decade. But we're not doing that to fund different government programs or to just fill up our coffers. We're going to give that money back to you, to businesses, to people, by lowering other taxes uh, and to help you in the transition. Um, it's still a difficult message, but I think it's an easier one. Uh, and uh, both businesses and people need to know that, okay, as long as I uh, make an effort, uh, as long as I try to change to be part of the green shift, this will be a good deal for me. And I think it's also important to uh, emphasize all climate policies that people, uh, for good reason, think are good policies for them in their own lives. Public transportation, for example, is a winning issue. People are in favor of decent public transportation, and it's an important environmental issue. Uh, so that is also something that at least our party is always running on, uh, and um, where we're uh, making an impact in government as well. So these are difficult questions, but I think it's possible. Uh, and I think it's also important that uh, people need to be aware of the problem and just awareness raising on the uh, rapid loss of biodiversity uh, of the devastating impacts of climate change are themselves important to legitimize uh, policies on climate action. So uh, I guess that, that would be my answer. Jan? Yes, um, yes, of course, we can, we, we can uh, uh, say a little things about uh, the uh, Gilets Jaunes in France. Um, um, and we, we, we have uh, lessons to, to, uh, to uh, um, uh, from, from this, this uh, crisis. Um, uh, the, the main re re lesson is that uh, um, w when you when you make a, a green tax, uh, you you must uh, imagine that, uh, for example, the the the, the petroleum uh, energy tax we we had it was a form of carbon tax. Um, everybody has to to pay pay it. Uh, even if you are rich or poor, you you had to, to pay it, and and that was a was a a, a real um, um, uh, problem uh, for we didn't see uh, in France. Um, poor people said we okay okay you 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 make a, a carbon tax, but we can pay it in the same way as the rich people. For rich people, it's not a problem, but for, for us, it's a problem. We, we need our car, everybody to go to work, and, and we, we can't uh, just uh, pay more and more uh, uh, without uh, 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 have um, a, a return of, 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 uh, of this, this tax. And um, it's why we, we had the, the Gilets Jaunes. And um, um, I think that, uh, uh, a green tax has to be a, a, a socially um, uh, uh, fair um, because otherwise people will just reject it 
uh, it's why it happened in, in France with, with uh, the, the Gilets Jaunes. And uh, for the future, uh, the lesson is that if we, we make, make a, a carbon tax and we, 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 will, we, will, we, we will do it, we need to do it, um, and perhaps other environmental taxes, um, the, the, the two uh, thing we have to do if we make green taxes is what the minister said. The first is to explain how uh, the money go, go, goes back to the people. And um, for example, for the carbon tax, we have to really be sure that 100% uh, uh, of, of the, the benefit of, of this tax goes in, in uh, uh, helps and 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 and, and uh, to, uh, to 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 everybody and especially to the poor poor people to to for example change their car or or change the heat heating of their houses. Um, uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is to say that um, if we make a, a new uh, green tax, it's uh, 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 in 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 uh, to to replace other taxes um, uh, because uh, uh, if if the pressure the pressure on, on on people is is going more and more because of the of the green taxes they will reject uh, green tax taxes so so that that are for me the two conditions to make new green taxes. So, and, and we are now in this subject of this green tax shift um, that you, you kind of explain. I can see in Denmark, they have been uh, using those green tax shifts and meaning basically they put more taxes on everything that is way more polluting or has a really bad uh, food carbon print while they would lower the tax on, on every other thing that, uh, that is good for the environment, basically. Um, so do you like, how does it look like in practice here in Norway or, or in France? I don't know if I should keep going first or if you want to start, John, uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, all right, I'll start. Uh, well, uh, a few comments from me. I think, um, first of all, uh, it's important to, to be in favor of and to defend green taxes. They're not always popular, but they are incredibly effective uh, because uh, sure politicians can make uh, decisions on singular investments and we can subsidize certain technologies, but, uh, and that can be helpful, but it doesn't really compare to all the tens of thousands of decisions being made every day in corporate boards or, and in the market. And if those decisions aren't green, then there's no way we're gonna move forward to stop climate change. And the singular most effective way to make those decisions green is to price carbon emissions and to price them at a high level. Um, that, that, that is a simple fact. So, so we need to, to do that. Now, um, there are many ways uh, you can do it. Uh, first of all, of course, we have the um, the uh, the um, the uh, uh, the ETS system in 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 Europe. The the quotas, uh, the carbon quotas that you trade between businesses. Uh, that is a system that is working uh, and that's providing uh, very important results and it's driving down emissions. Um, in Norway, we have. Uh, a national carbon tax as well on top of that uh, for a lot of different different sectors, uh, petroleum, for example, and also uh, the, the airline industry. Um, and the good thing about using all these different taxes is that they can also provide a revenue to lower other taxes, which makes it all uh, grow the economy. Um, our uh, national uh, statistics board, uh, before we launched our climate action plan, they made some calculations on the effect of uh, green taxes on the economy. Uh, and the results were that uh, when you introduce green taxes, uh, that can have a, um, that, that can be a, a, um, a drag on the economy, it can make uh, growth uh, go down. But 
if you use that revenue to reduce other taxes, both on businesses and on people, it can in fact be a net positive and it can help both drive down emissions and drive economic growth because uh, you make uh, you make working and uh, and uh, inventing new solutions and succeeding as a business you make that easier uh, but you do it uh, in a green way so uh, i think uh, it's important to uh, raise prices on carbon emissions uh, because it affects uh, infinitely more decisions than the ones being made in parliaments, so that's uh, good. But it cannot be the only tool in the toolbox. We need to do a lot of uh, more things than that to reduce emissions. Uh, and there are a lot of um, groundbreaking investments that are still uh, not cost effective uh, with high carbon taxes, but that need to be done uh, nevertheless. Uh, an important example in Norway is that we are currently investing a lot of money in um, uh, carbon capture and storage technology, uh, because that technology is is needed uh, to reduce emissions from a lot of industrial processes, from waste management plants, etc. Uh, that's very expensive technology, and even with our high carbon taxes, it's not a uh, good uh, business model yet. So the government is providing direct subsidies to the development of the technology. So I think sometimes you need to do that to take some leaps forward and to make investments that are. Uh, certainly needed in the future but as a general rule as a basis you need to have the carbon taxes in place and in my opinion to give the money back to people and to businesses uh, i can see actually a question regarding that uh, before you you go on uh, jan maybe um regarding this carbon tax uh Toure, uh ask about um how about securing that 100 percent of it uh, goes out again to all citizens over the yearly tax bill for example so that each citizen sees that it is paid out and everyone receives their part that would be the secure way of returning a carbon tax that's a comment from tour there no and that's a that's a solid idea uh, and it's also uh, our main plan for the increase of the Norwegian carbon tax. It is to give it back to people. Uh, what complicates matters is that um, if you just uh, give everyone the same, uh, there will be a lot of people complaining that uh, some people lead, people, people live very different lives. Uh, some need to drive around a lot, uh, some don't. And if you just give everyone the same, some people will really make a net profit from that, whereas others will still uh, suffer. So there are voices that want to have a more differentiated approach. But I think from a purely um, economic perspective, uh, just um, implementing carbon taxes and giving it, back, giving it back without a lot of exceptions and complicated rules would be the most effective system. Sure. And do you want to complete? Um, um, yes, in France, at the beginning, when we when we we we, we uh, decided to make the carbon tax a few years ago, um, the 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 benefit of the, the this tax was not used on uh, uh, ecological policies. It was used, for example, to help uh, uh, industries or to help companies, but without consideration about environment. That was a mistake. That was really not a good thing. And uh, um, uh, after that, uh, as, you, as you know, we, we just, um, we had the Gilets Jaunes uh, uh, situation and we stopped for the moment uh, to increase the carbon tax. But but the idea, the, the mo most the really important idea, it's, it's what the minister said. We, we have to imagine a system to give back the money but give back the money on, on environmental uh, policies and environmental solutions. Um, and of course, the, the question is not to give uh, the, same, uh, the same amount to everybody, but to especially, uh, and that's what we uh, see in France about the Gilets Jaunes, to, to, to prioritize, uh, prioritize the, the, the uh, people who are uh, uh, in a, a social situation who, who, who they can't make uh, an effort. Uh, and so uh, uh, it's why uh, the, the principle of, of giving back the money is to be uh, a social measures to, to, to uh, um, 
to to uh, uh, because because it's a really important thing for us, but it's uh, it's a question of uh, about uh, the gilets jaunes situation. It's we it's a question of, of the acceptability of of the taxes, and if if we we don't uh, we, we don't care about about that. Uh, uh, as we we had that in France with the gilets jaunes, we just have to uh, we just have to stop uh, um, uh, the the uh, politic of, of of green taxes. So that's really important to be to be uh, aware of about the social uh, consequences of of what we do. Um, um, and the other thing I wanted to say about uh, the uh, green tax uh, politic we have to do is to um, uh, um, see about uh, subsidies we, we give to, to, to companies and, and to reduce uh, the subsidies who are uh, bad for the planet and to uh, increase the subsidies who are good for the planet, especially on, on, on industry and, and, and companies. Uh, so that's a, a really important say, things I think we, we, we see in, in the scientific reports we from the IPPC, IPCC or the IBES about biodiversity, it really reduces public subsidies uh, to companies. Good. I, I also have another uh, um, question, or it's more like a, a contribution from Simon that say, I don't know if people understand what's being carbon neutral in 2050. In France, it means two tons of CO2 per person and per year. Two ton means no more plane trip, drastically reducing meat consumption, buying very few new electronic equipment, clothes, and so on. And we have to tell people that the transition will lower the standard of living, and that's okay. But thinking that we will be neutral just by being, buying ele electric cars is a fallacy. What uh, do you have to answer to that, Spino? Uh, well, I don't think it's a fallacy. Uh, I think it's uh, possible uh, to experience green growth uh, because at the root of the problem isn't the fact that economies are growing and that we're doing things more effective and we're getting more out of our resources every day. That is fundamentally a good thing. At the root of the problem, uh, is uh, that we're using fossil fuels instead of renewables. <laughs> that is the most important change that we need to make. And it's possible to have a good standard of living and uh, to grow your economy based on renewables rather than fossil fuels. Uh, it takes time. Uh, there are a lot of combustion engines that need to be changed. There are a lot of power plants that need to uh, change their technology, et cetera. Uh, but it's possible. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is also a resource problem here where we are um, uh, using more of the Earth's resources than can be regenerated every year. And that is not just a fossil fuel problem. That's also uh, a lot of a range of other issues, uh, especially uh, to uh, make sure that we don't uh, keep increasing the deforestation rate every year, for example. So, so there are a lot of uh, things where we need to put uh, a different mindset in place and change the way we do things. But it is possible to do it without lowering people's standard of living. And I think that's an important reality, but I also think it's an important message because I think if we tell people that what we will need from you in the next couple of decades are incredible sacrifices where you will have uh, a um, lower standard of living, lower wages, uh, worse welfare programs, um, and more job insecurity. I'm not sure uh, if I'm the best politician in the world, but I do know that that is not a very great message. Uh, and I think um, also it is wrong. I mean, I think it's possible to make a change uh, and we need to make a change. And I think that is the only way we can make that change. So uh, I don't mean to under underwrite uh, the very real problems of resources and uh, what we're doing to nature at the moment. But I think it's it's possible to change that, uh, and not just by shrinking our economies. Jan? Yes, um, um, I'm sure it's. Uh, I, I spoke uh, just at the moment about about the acceptability of taxes and and, and in a, in a in a in another way. What, what the minister says it's. 
we have to, to think about the acceptability of the transition, uh, uh, not only about the taxes, but all, all, all what we want to do uh, in the future. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we have we, we won't have a, a, a lot of, of, of votes in elections if, if we <laughs> say to people, I will prepare for you a, a, a really bad future and, and we, you will be poorer and you will have a, 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 a bad standard of life. But the question is, um, um, uh, we are, we are uh, seven billions of humans on, on, the, on, on, on the planet and we will be 10 billions uh, in, in, few, in few decades, I think 2050. The, 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 uh, the, the, what I saw in, in the demography uh, uh, um, projections. But uh, so we, we can't have uh, every human on this planet the same uh, way of life of what we have today. That's completely uh, evident. And uh, the question is what, what will be the, the standard of the future? And um, it's, it won't be, it will be not, not be the same, of course, uh, that, that's, I, I think it's, it's an important message, but, but the more important message is to, is to say, we can be happy as we are today, happy with another standard of life. And we have to define what, is, what will be this standard. And um, um, as I said, as we, we, we began this meeting, we speaking about uh, eating less meat, uh, I think we can be happy in eating less meat and think we can be happy in using more our bicycle and less our car. I, can, I think we can be happy in uh, uh, um, uh, having a house with more uh, efficient uh, 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 in, in, heat, in the heating. Um, the, the, the model of our life in, in, in a few decades have to, has to change, but but it can be uh, uh, positive and can, it can be, uh, we can be happy uh, in this uh, new uh, model of, of life. And just a word about um, the electric cars, because I think it was a question. Um, uh, uh, I, I think that uh, um, we, especially the young generations are changing our, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, meaning about cars that don't want anymore to have their own car, especially in France, the new generations and the young adults don't want to have their cars. They, they want to, to share a car. They want to uh, use more bicycle. That's uh, changing. And again, they are not less happy than the, the, their parents. The, they just think it's it different. The mobility is different today. And um, uh, the, it's important to say that uh, the, the cars uh, in, in the next years don't have to be the same model of, 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 on, uh, as what we, we, we knew for the moment. And I think a good ele electric car is a car we shared. Um, uh, and um, because you, we have to think that, um, of course, an electric car is not using fossil fuel, but it's using batteries, and batteries needs a lot of minerals, who uh, makes uh, could be make a, a damage on nature. So we have to to just be uh, uh, take care of of all the consequences of the changes and the transition, and and and. Uh, explaining to everybody what, what can be the future. And again, it can be completely uh, a positive future. I want now to, to ask a question about the jobs that we, we're creating, right? So the Greens, they speak about the need for zero growth and, and scaling down on consumption, while liberals and centrists' responses has been more to emphasize in a change of consumer behavior and also act, acting through regulations. But what that, that we still need, that we still need economic growth, right? But then how do we create jobs while saving the climate? Svainu, please. Well, um... First of all, I think it's very important to link those two. Uh, and if you pay attention to what they're doing in the US now with uh, 
the various initiatives uh, on climate from the Biden administration, they're always making sure to link it to uh, job creation uh, and that uh, that a green economy is an economy with more jobs, not less jobs, uh, and they're good paying uh, jobs of the future. Um, but it is uh, obviously always difficult to explain to people that what we have now uh, needs to change. And it's also always easier to see what you have now. Uh, and, you know, it's real, it's there. Uh, and it's hard to imagine something that isn't really there yet. So in, in Norway, for example, this discussion is obviously very real because we have such a big petroleum sector. Uh, and there are hundreds of thousands of Norwegians that are employed directly or indirectly by petroleum companies. Uh, and that is an, an obvious business model that needs to change. I mean, there are a lot of jobs you can debate whether or not they will be there in the green future. But I think jobs related to the extraction of petroleum resources will obviously be going down. Um, but uh, uh, as they always frame this question in, in the Norwegian debate, you know, what is the new oil? What will be the new sector where these people will be working? And I think there isn't one answer to that. Uh, and the hard thing to explain to people is that uh, we as politicians can't just uh, predict and know what will be big employment sectors in 30 years because the, the market will be uh, the decision maker on that because you need to compete. And what you're uh, producing will have to compete on a global marketplace uh, if the job is to be sustainable. Um, but uh, what helps is that there are a lot of new technologies now that are uh, green, that are linked to the green shift, and that people are seeing real jobs appearing. Right? And that is, uh, you know, renewable energy, obviously, which is a big job creator. Uh, you have um, uh, batteries, which will be central in the green shift, which is a big job creator. Uh, you have uh, a lot of new technologies like um, hydrogen and ammonia, uh, and uh, all of these are also big job creators. So I think this job gets easier uh, once we get the new, um, the new, um, new products and technologies up and running. Um, but, but the fact of the matter is that as, uh, uh, as long as there are people on this planet, those people will be uh, working and performing tasks for each other uh, for uh, for payment. Uh, that, that's just the way of life. And whether or not fossil fuels are at the heart of that or not uh, isn't really all that relevant. I mean, people will still be uh, working, uh, making good wages uh, in a green future. There's no doubt about it. And I think also uh, it's very important, and that's my final point, uh, to get people to understand that uh, jobs that are linked to a uh, fossil present and not a green future aren't necessarily safe jobs. Uh, if you want a safe job, it needs to be a sustainable job. Uh, it needs to be built on a business model that can still be there in 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, so uh, the present isn't always you know, the safe option. Sometimes the safest thing is to change. Uh, and that's the best thing to do for the future. And I think that is a message that is getting through to Norwegians. It's taken a while, but I think there are a lot of people now who are understanding that we need to change to be competitive and to be competitive on green solutions. So linking climate policies and jobs as we're doing in the US, as we're trying to do in Norway, uh, is an important thing to do for all environmentalists in, in my opinion. Jan, do you want to add something? No, because I completely agree with, with, the, with the minister. Uh, um, just an example in my mind, I, I just were, was a, a few days ago with a, 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 a fisheries company. Uh, it's not, a, not linked with, with fossil fuel, but, but it was linked with, with uh, the fishery. And, and, and that I was explaining to them, but it was difficult to explain it. Uh, I, did, I was explaining to them that we need to preserve the, the, the fish resources because if we don't preserve it, they won't fish anything more uh, in, in, uh, in just in, in the five, 10 next years and they won't have any more uh, jobs. 
So uh, we have to preserve the resources of, of fish. And exactly the same thing just the minister said, if, if a job is not sustainable, it, 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 won't, it won't be, uh, uh, it, it will not uh, be uh, um, uh, preserved a long time. And, and, uh, and, and for people, it's uh, sometimes we are speaking to young people, they don't will just uh, stop to work in, in 10 or 20 years. So we have to, to, to think solution to, to preserve that job and, and to, to propose to them uh, jobs who are sustainable. That's really the main message, yes. Thanks a lot. Um, I have a final uh, question that I will take, uh, but then for the rest of you, don't worry, we will take all your questions and I will pass it along to Sveinung and Jan that will be able to enter, uh, answer them on a, on a Google sheet that I will then send it to you uh, after this, uh, this, uh, this event. But the, the final question for you, Sveinung, is what does Norway think of Joe Biden's ID, because you were speaking about it just a few minutes uh, ago, of a global corporate ta tax rate as a way to also found a green transition? Um, well, I, I think the idea of a global standard uh, taxation rate for companies uh, has a lot of merit uh, because what we have been seeing over the last years is a race to the bottom uh, where it's easier and easier to move companies from country to country. And that makes an obvious ex incentive for countries to lower their corporation tax rates. Um, but uh, it is a race to the bottom, which keeps governments uh, less and less funded. Uh, so um, I think uh, that is an idea that has a lot of merit. Now, whether that corporate tax should be earmarked, so to say, uh, to fund green solutions, uh, well, that's not really how we do things in Norway, at least. I mean, we collect taxes and then we spend money on green solutions, but we don't link one to the other. Um, but but I, as a general idea, I think uh, that is a... Uh, a good way forward. We'll see if it's possible. I mean, it's 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 hard, uh, and even, I mean, even within the EU, it's uh, it it hasn't been possible to to harmonize corporation tax rates, and you have countries who have quite low corporation tax rates, uh, which uh, attract investments, obviously, but in the end, makes everyone lose out from it. So, it's a difficult task, but I think that's just one uh, of a number of examples now that. Uh, we're seeing from the new administration in Washington that they're uh, progressive uh, and they're leaning forward and they're thinking globally and not just America first. And that's the great news for everyone, including America. Great. Um, okay, so I will uh, now uh, close this, uh, this debate. Uh, again, it's a lot of questions that I have not been answered right now, but uh, both Sveinung and Jan will take the time uh, after to, to answer some of those questions and we will pass it along to you. Uh, so don't worry for that. Uh, thanks a lot for all those amazing questions. Thanks a lot, Jan and Sveinung for, your, for you uh, being there and, and, uh, and answering all those questions. I want just to give you maybe the last words to both of you if you, if you want to add uh, the last comments uh before we we end that and maybe uh, jan it will be the, the the time when you can speak a bit about uh, biodiversity if uh, if you want as well and how it's linked with uh, with uh, climate change so uh jan you can start and maybe spinum to to end that yes thank you uh, matilde and uh, now it's not not really a lot of things to do, to say just because my work as a French ambassador is, is especially this year to, to, to push uh, the biodiversity question on, on the table because it's, it's, uh, we, have, we will have a, a, at the end of this year in October a, a big COP in China about biodiversity. It's an equivalent, equivalent of, of the Paris Agreement on, on biodiversity. It will be on, bio, on, on climate. We have Paris Agreement on Climate in, in, in 2015. This year, we will have the COP biodiversity with, uh, as important as the Climate COP. Uh, and uh, the question we will put on the table, especially France and a lot of other countries, I think, uh, Norway, Norway too, I, I know, uh, is to say that climate and biodiversity are completely linked. And they have to be linked because of uh, because on one hand, uh, uh, 
uh, biodiversity is a solution uh, for uh, mitigating uh, climate because uh, uh, rainforests, uh, wetlands, uh, oceans are uh, um, uh, can, can keep a lot of carbon and, and, and uh, uh, the, the, next, the last uh, um, uh, uh, estimation I had, it's, it could contribute to 30% to, so, uh, to the solution of, uh, about mitigating climate. So it's really important to protect uh, 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 the, the biodiversity to, 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 to um, reduce the, the climate uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, to fight against again climate change. Uh, and the second reason we have to, to, to link biodiversity and climate is because um, in, in, for last year, in the last decades, we, we, we uh, uh, had solutions uh, about climate uh, uh, change was not really good for nature. I think about uh, uh, for example, uh, a big, big, big hydroelectric uh, dams uh, in some countries where really uh, uh, make damage on, on nature. Or uh, another example is the palm oil production in Indonesia and Malaysia, or destroyed a lot of rainforest, forest, and it was done for because it was solution uh, uh, for cars. Uh, to push to push palm oil, palm oil in, in to 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 drive cars. So we see that climate solutions are not always good for nature. So we have to link biodiversity and climate. It's why we, it's, it, uh, I wanted to say it. And finally, my last word is to say, en français, cher Mathilde, et aux Français qui sont connectés, de voter pour toi à la fin de ce mois de mai. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, uh, Yann. <laughs> So I think you can uh, also maybe uh, conch, uh, snack a little uh, norsk, if you will. I'll do it in English, actually, uh, but uh, thanks. Um, and uh, well, uh, three, uh, three quick points uh, here at the end. Uh, first, I concur with everything that Jan said on biodiversity. Natural-based solutions are key both to protect nature and to stop climate change. Uh, and these aren't opposites. These go hand in hand. So uh, I can certainly uh, sign that message. Second, uh, I return to the reason we're all gathered here, which is that it's Europe Day. Uh, and um, there are always discussions on, you know, which questions belong to the nation state and which need uh, supranational solutions. I think there is no doubt that climate change, almost by definition, is something that needs supranational solutions. We need the EU to be a strong uh, ally and at the forefront of the global battle against climate change. Uh, and I think with the European Green Deal in place, we will have our table set for uh, meeting our ambitious reduction targets. That's great news, but we need to always keep pushing. So happy Europe Day again. And uh, finally, uh, Matilda, I'll just uh, thank you for moderating our discussion uh, and for excellent questions. And uh, uh, as Jan did, I will also uh, wish you the best of luck uh, in elections coming up. Uh, I hope you do well. Uh, and uh, for all of you who are planning to vote, uh, do that. And if you're also by chance a dual citizen, then perhaps both uh, have a Norwegian passport and a French passport, you will also be able to vote in our important parliamentary elections coming up in this fall in September. And if you need a party to vote for, I have a very great tip uh, where to go. So uh, you can uh, reach out afterwards and we'll, we'll talk Norwegian policies as well. But uh, with that, I just say thank you um, for a great discussion and uh, uh, back to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for both of you. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, uh, again, uh, for being there on a Sunday night. Uh, I understand uh, it can be uh, yeah, a bit late and, and not uh, that uh, nice to, to speak about all those subjects on, uh, on, uh, during the weekend. But thank you so much for being there. And uh, again, uh, this will be recorded. I will remove all your names, and so we can uh, we can you can keep the the, the videos and and watch it watch it again uh, later. Uh, 
uh, we will uh, take all your questions and, and again, they will answer your questions and we will uh, send it back to you after this, uh, this event in the, in the next few days. So thanks, thanks again, uh, everyone. And I wish you a very, very good uh, end of this uh, weekend and a very good uh, uh, Europe day today. Bye-bye. <laughs>